So Sony are about to do a live announcement on this live stream for possibly a new camera today. Let's go check this out. Zeter's really exciting. So this is streaming right now. You can obviously go see this whole thing in its entirety, but there were two announcements from Sony today that are very exciting. A new telephoto lens and a new camera body. The lens is an FE 100 to 400 millimeter F.4 to F.56 GM OSS. I think I got all the letters in there. Anyway, it looks very cool if you're into telephoto lenses, but even more exciting to me is their new camera, which is the new Sony Alpha 9. So let's talk about the Sony A9 because I think this is a really big deal. And the specs indicate that this is the world's first full frame stacked CMOS sensor with integral memory offering basically a 24 megapixel resolution. And what this means is this sensor now offers approximately 20 times faster data readout speeds than what we've seen before. This is another big deal, but if you are shooting at speeds above 1 1 25th of a second, you can get up to 20 frames per second blackout free continuous shooting, which is a huge deal. That means when you take a picture, the screen does not black out while the shutter's being released and then come back. And that's a huge deal for mirrorless. The buffer tests from Sony are indicating that it shoots 241 raw images or 362 JPEG images before that buffer has to clear. If you use the electronic shutter, you are capable of completely silent shooting at speeds of up to 1 32,000th of a second. This is fast. Autofocus is very impressive with the A9. It features 693 phase detection autofocus points that cover about 93% of the total frame. Autofocus and auto exposure tracking calculations operate independently at up to 60 frames a second. So you can be shooting at 20 frames a second, still images, and basically the autofocus and auto exposure are continuously updating at about 60 frames a second. And so this is going to ensure more accuracy in the exposure and the focus in the images you're getting. And I think that combined with phase detection is a huge deal. It features an ethernet port for file transfer and dual SD card slots, so this is clearly targeted at pro photographers that are probably doing photojournalism or sports. It also features 5-axis in-body image stabilization with a 5-step shutter speed advantage. This is also cool, there is a new battery design. These are the new Z batteries, and they feature double the capacity of the previous W size batteries. And this has been a big issue with a lot of people who shoot on Sony's, myself included, is that you have to carry a lot of batteries. They are constantly going out. And replacing a battery is not the end of the world, but it does get old after a while and to have something that gives you double the capacity is really nice. Plus there is also a new battery grip that goes with this thing so you can put two of these Z batteries in and not have to worry about it nearly as much. Pre-orders start this Friday. The price in the U.S. is $4,499 and Canadian $5,599. The video specs are pretty much what you would expect from Sony. It features full frame 4K recording. You get full pixel readout without pixel binning and it collects 6K of info and oversamples this to arrive at a 4K picture in the end and this is how a lot of the Sony's work like the a6300 the 6500 now they've carried this forward into the a9 and I think most of the cameras will have this from this point on it also features full HD recording at 120 frames a second and up to speeds of 100 megabits a second for slow motion shooting this is a big deal if you like to over crank footage and then slow it down in post now who is this camera targeted for what are Sony trying to do and I think it's interesting because Sony relative to Canon and Nikon are the newcomers on the market still. And I think with a lot of their cameras, since they bought out Minolta, they've had a lot to prove with each generation of camera. And they've done some amazingly impressive things. I use Sony's for a lot of my work and I absolutely love the cameras that I use. The one area, and I've griped about it before, that is really not a problem for me, but it would be for somebody who shoots sports or something with a lot of fast motion where you have to get a lot of shots, is the speed performance is just not up there with the DSLR. You know, you do have the advantage of having an electronic viewfinder and you can see more readout on your screen in terms of having a histogram, what's going on with your exposure, and being able to adjust those settings accordingly. Some people prefer the old method of a DSLR where you're using a reflex and a mirror, you see what the lens is seeing through the lens. And so it's a very different 
different approach, but there's always been, I think, an advantage to having a mirrorless camera. Now, the disadvantage is the speed and the blackouts. I mentioned earlier what blackout is, is when you're shooting a picture and the screen goes black and then comes back on while the exposure is being made. And sometimes it blacks out for a little longer than it takes to do the exposure. This is apparently not an issue with this camera. If you're shooting above 1 1 25th of a second, there's no blackout and you can shoot up to 20 frames a second. So clearly we are now competing with the DSLR market of Nikon and Canon. And so that's a huge deal. And that's who this camera is targeted for. I think they've really, I mean, the video specs on this camera are great. And I think what will impact that somewhat is the autofocus. And finally, we now have a touch screen so you can touch to direct select autofocus points. And there are some other new autofocus features here as well. For the first time, we now have direct access control over autofocus points. And there's a little mini joystick on the back of the body. You can use that to move the AF selection point around, which is really nice. And it also features some other cool stuff as well. So for instance, you can set up focus areas. I don't know how useful this would be, but the specs look impressive where you can set up an area of the picture that you want the autofocus to be centered in on and you can store these into memory for recall later which is very cool and supposedly the camera if you flip from vertical to horizontal orientation can shift those autofocus points you know along with you and so I think that is very cool too so this is clearly aimed at people who shoot sports photojournalism or just love to spray and pray and have an expensive camera. I wanna know what you guys think. Is this something you would be interested in? It's a little out of my price range to justify what I would need it for, um, but I would love to get my hands on one. Maybe I can rent one or something and share that with you guys because it does look pretty cool and very impressive. And it's kind of back when I used to shoot events and such, it was one reason I never felt comfortable with mirrorless on something like that because of the blackout and just the lack of speed that you have. And it seems like they've cleared that up. I can attest in some of the other cameras that they've involved phase detection autofocus in that that alone has been a huge boon for mirrorless or any camera for that matter because Canon features it too. But that is a huge deal and I think it will be one beast of a camera. So I want to know what you guys think. If you've enjoyed this video as always, like it, share it, and subscribe to The Art of Photography for more videos. Until the next one, I'll see you guys then. Later.